what's up everyone welcome back to another tutorial in today's tutorial i'm going to show you how to make a very basic menu and also a level select section where you can select levels but what's even better is once you play the game and let's say you complete a level very quickly and you go back to the main menu that the level select actually saves which level you're where and even after quitting and playing again you can go back to level select and it saved let's say your progress so let's get right into it so i've set up this small project uh, with some pre-work so there's a main menu with a play button and a level select i will show you in a short minute what's inside and then i've set up four levels so if you go to level one and uh, let's zoom to the player with f and then zoom out a little bit so the player starts here it jumps over there's a finish and on the finish you have a trigger and it loads level two in level two then there is a turret and at the finish it loads level three and in level three there's two turrets and it loads then level four and level four is just the empty scene which is then fine and in the main menu uh, let's just go here focus here there we go if we press now play there's a couple of things which are here first of all i've made it that if you hover over something that it makes a sound and if you now go to the play button there are two fsms to hover over and you can do this ui on pointer enter event then it triggers and on the play itself there is an uh, of course the image of play and then there is a button and it's important to have a highlighted color and well if you want to work with the event system and select with the arrow keys also have a selected color and then you will get this effect the fsm is only there um yes the fan trigger was made by the player fsm by itself so that's pretty nice so every time i go over the play button with the pointer it just plays this hover sound and on the play button of course there is a jump scene so ui button on click event change scene and there we need to use the load scene level one and of course for the level select whoops it doesn't work because i haven't made a level select scene because i want to make it together with you on the exit there is just application quit so application quit uh, you quit your application so that's a very basic setup of the main menu now let's add a level select screen and also show what we need to change in the levels to save the data so the next time when you load your game you can let's say select the level which you have completed so how am i going to do this what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy the main menu let's just uh, press ctrl d and let's rename this one in level select whoops there we go and one thing which is of course important in the build settings to also add the scene now so let's have the main menu and then the level select and note that when i do load scene i always go by name and not by index and now on the level select let's change the scene to by name there's no language uh, because in my other game there is a language bar as well let's make a level select there we go and this was still the main menu now let's go to the level select screen always be careful because it's the same and what we want to do here is just change a little bit the buttons and add the other features so what we're going to do is i'm just going to drag up this play here and i'm going to remove the button and also i'm going to remove these fsms there i only want the picture here play uh, no things and let's call this then also level select so we just drag in this other picture of course if you work with text then just uh, use the level select text this is also fine but i don't want this to be a button in which you can interact with of course make sure that the exit button is now not an exit button but a load scene button load scene um and not by index by name we're just going to go back to the main menu and make sure to save 
And here's our level select. And perhaps let's uh, just put like four buttons, one, two, three, four, with the levels. But of course, it's however you like. And the level select, I'm just going to change this now to level one. And I'm just dragging in the picture level one. And change scene is also here level one. So this is the level one button. The level one is, of course, available from, let's say, the start. Now let's duplicate this one and make sure the order is fine. And let's just drag it here. Uh, maybe here is all right. And the level one, let's drag it back a little bit. So we have it all a little bit centered. That looks good. Let's call this level two. Yes, and on the level two, of course, we're going to drag in the level two. Then I'm just going to select both of them. I'm going to control D and drag them down. There we go. And let's call this level three. And drag in level three. And make sure that the scene is also level three. And this is then level four. Uh, and also let's call it here level four. And the scene change should also be level four. So now you've got, let's say, <clears throat> the basic setup to select your level, but you don't have a system to lock your level yet, right? It's gonna drag those here. And the idea is to lock at least level two, level three, and level four, right? Because you first need to finish level one before you can access level uh, two. And so I'm just going to duplicate them all again. And let's just call this level two uh, locked. Uh, level three locked. And level four locked. And on the level two, I'm just going to drag in the other picture. Of course, you can also have a separate picture of just the lock. Uh, but I have a complete picture which has level two written and the lock over it. And also for level three, I made this. I made it, by the way, in PowerPoint. I know, <laughs> I know, very impressive, right? And then level four locked. And on these buttons, I actually, I can select them all. I want to remove the components. I want to remove, remove the FSMs as well, because they're just pictures hovering on top. If I go now in this scene, you would already, I can select this, but I cannot select the ones behind because the level two is actually blocking the way. Yeah? But of course, in the event system, it's still possible to select the other um, boxes behind it. So what we want to do is, of course, delete or let's say destroy the right levels according to um, what your safe level is at. Right? So what we're going to do is add a level controller. Let's just call this a level con controller. And within the level controller, we're going to make a new FSM. And let's call this just the level controller. And in the first state, we are going to get, let's say, save file. Or it's actually called player prefs. And what we're going to do is get player, player prefs get int. Player prefs get int is the action. And we only need to get one, so you can actually access more keys here if you like, but only one. And let's call this the level count. And what we're going to do is we're going to save this in a new global variable. Yeah. And let's call this the level count as well. There we go. And it's now zero, right? And so we're just going to get at the start when entering level select, we're going to get this level. And what we're going to do then is just add a finish transition. And here we're going to say update level selection. And in the update level selection, we're going to add a int switch. And int switch is a quite a practical tool. First of all, we're going to set the global of level count sorry there are some other globals here because there are some other scenes from other tutorials so i'm just going to select level count here 
what we want to do is have four switches. So, and what we want to do is compare, let's say, the int of one, two, three, and four. Yeah? Because, let's say, on level one, um, or one is already level one is fixed. So this is fine. Once you enter level one, you have one available, right? And we're going to add several events. We're going to add a new event here, and let's call this level one. And with two, we're going to call it level two. And with three, we're going to call it level three. And uh, with four, of course, it's level four. And the nice trick is now you can click them here in order, and they're all added. And let's now add here one state. We call this update screen. And here we're just gonna go to, gonna go to destroy objects. And the size is three. And what we're going to destroy, uh, and let's say if you only have access to level one, we want to destroy level two, three, and four, right? That seems correct, right? Update screen, uh, or let's call this also level one available. Now, and you can guess it, if I do now copy paste here and go to level two, and let's say level two available, Instead of deleting now level two, I want to delete the level two locked, right? Let's copy this over here. And let's call this level three available. It's a little bit, I think I've done it a little bit awkwardly how I have to delete it. But level two locked is then deleted and level three locked will be deleted. And finally, let's go here. And let's say level four available. It was smarter to say available level one, and then it would have made it two, three, four. Uh, so never put a number in between because then you have to update it manually. We learned something there. Right. So the moment we go into a level select, it will check, let's say, the player prefs, uh, get int, and then it will update the level count. And then it will do an int switch of level count and compare the one, one, two, three, four. Yeah? And of course, once we start the game, it's zero the first time you play. But now let's update, uh, of course, this um, player pref of level count, right? So if you go now to level one and we go to the finish, and let's focus here, I have load level. And then I load level two. And I'm going to add a action here now. So player prefs set hint. And if I now go here, I can, of course, write here level count. And I'm going to put then value two. Oops, two. Huh? Because the moment I hit here, I'm going to go to level two. And so level two is available. All right. Just going to, uh, well, I want to copy, let's say, the whole thing. Uh, but anyway, let's go to level three. And also go to finish. And I want to add it here, actually. But let's just do the same again. And make sure to put it at the start. Uh, level count. I hope I the key is correct now. And here it's in, of course, three because we're, um, oops, no, this is now level three. I should have updated, uh, so this is level four, sorry. I went to level three scene and I should go to the level two scene, sorry. And in the level two scene, I should do it right this time. And as you notice, it is, of course, better to just make the finish once and then copy this finish to the other levels, including the right FSM. Because uh, now I every time I have to type this in, level count, uh, this is now, of course, three. So let's uh, shortly check it. Level one, there is the level count two. And level two, it's level count three. 
and level three is level count four. Great. So if I now go to the main menu, and I'm just going to play shortly. And I'm like here, and let's see. I go to level select. Only level one is available. And of course, I can go here to level one then. And let me here jump over. And boom, I'm in level two. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the main menu. If I go now to level select, you can see that automatically it destroyed, let's say, the locks. So now I can just go to level two. But of course, now I'm still in game. What if I stop playing now and I press play again? So if you exit the application, that's what that is. And I go to level select. Now you can still see that level two and level one are available. Of course, if you want to have a reset button, you can just make a button, let's say reset locked levels or reset uh, unlocked levels. And then you just make a click button there with setting the player prefs of level count back to one. All right, so now you can see I have now only two, so I can go here on to level two. Whoops, um, I don't think I updated the, that was for some reason. Let's go to level select. Let's go to canvas level two. For some reason, I think he loaded the wrong scene. Yes, this should be, of course, level two. That's or level three, this is correct. Level four. All right, I'm just gonna press play. As you can see, it's still locked here. But it's just the moment you get into it, it will destroy it. And now I'm going to go to level two. And I'm just going to dodge here the turret. And now I'm in level two. But let me just quit the game, right? Let's quit the game. Actually, I can just start again in level select. And as you can see, level three is now available. And once I go to level three, and dodge all the turret shots here. I finally made it to the end where you can make a nice thank you screen or whatever. Go back to the main menu. Sorry for the bad, bad pop-up menu there. That's still an old version, <laughs> but it works. It just brings me back to the screen. If you, by the way, if you wanna make this pop-up screen, just uh, follow the tutorial above. But as you can see now, no, it didn't update level four. So something went wrong. If we go to level three, let's just have a short look. Troubleshoot. Level count four, which should be fine. But perhaps here on the level controller, I'd made a mistake. Yep, I, did, I didn't delete it correctly. So always be careful there. We want to, of course, on the level control for level four, not destroy level four, we want to destroy level four locked. And this is already fine if I actually play now um, because the player prep, the player prefs you can see here is actually now four because it was set four and this is just a saved file. It's saved on your hard disk. So that's how that works. And as simple as that, you've made a level select and a load save kind of system. This is a very basic system, but for most small games, it's super effective. So please use it. I hope you liked it. Uh, if you like it, please consider subscribing. And I see you all in the next video. Cheers.